Hello mortals. Density is defined as the mass per volume of a specific substance. The density of a dog is how many kilograms of dog you can fit inside a cubic meter of dog. In case you're curious, that's roughly 1,062 kilograms or 2,341 pounds per cubic meter of dog. Don't ask me how I found that out. I've tried measuring cats but they bit my wires. Moving on. Everything has density. Water, birds, clouds, stars, your head in fifth grade when they introduced the alphabet into math. All these densities depend and vary based on the nature of atoms that make them up. So let us go on a journey to explore how extreme densities can get. Fun fact, Saturn is less dense than water, so it could theoretically enjoy a relaxing hot summer day floating in some unfeasibly large ocean, which would probably have to collapse into a star given its size and mass. Speaking about Saturn, I have decided to decorate my Skynet headquarters with beautiful high-quality metal posters of our solar system, provided by today's sponsor, Displate. They are part of the solar system collection and allow me to imagine myself visiting other planets while stuck here making videos instead. Displate has over 1 million designs available to choose from, ranging from gaming and comics to space and nature. They are mounted on the wall with a provided magnet, so no additional tools are needed. Customize your room and style by building your own collection of things that represent you, and for every poster that you buy, Displate will plant one tree. Some other recommended collections from me would be the Maps of the Universe and Cats, because who doesn't like cats? Or if dogs are your thing, go with the woof. I mean look at it. Check these recommendations from my profile by following the link in the description, and you will also get a special discount on any purchase you make. Back to the video. Starting with the least dense object from our universe, we have the vacuum. Following its definition, a space entirely devoid of matter, we expect its density to be zero. But not so fast, quantum physics is here to make our lives hard again. You know how the universe is expanding at an accelerated rate. That is only possible due to a positive value of the cosmological constant, in other words a positive vacuum energy. We do not know what exactly attributes this energy value to a vacuum, hence we coined the term dark energy to describe it. It is probably caused by some funky quantum mechanical phenomena, driving the value of the density very close to zero but not quite. Given some estimates, we get a density of roughly 10 to the power negative 27 kilograms per cubic meter but it is far from a confident answer as there is no consensus on the issue. Now that is an ideal version of a void. Such ideal vacuums don't really exist in reality. The empty space between galaxies, known as the intergalactic medium, holds somewhere between 1 and 100 particles per cubic meter. That's such a small number, that if you wanted to make a blueberry from such particles, you'd have to collect them from a region of intergalactic space the size of roughly 500 Earths. And even though these particles are spread so scarcely in the space between galaxies, they make up 95% of all the ordinary matter in the universe, leaving only 5% of the total mass of baryons to be enclosed inside galaxies and stars. That should give you a rough idea about how far away galaxies are from one another. If you however zoom inside a galaxy, and look at the interstellar void in between stars, you'll find that it contains 1 million atoms per cubic meter, so it's roughly 100,000 times denser than the intergalactic space, even though they both look equally empty at the first sight. Something similarly empty to the human eye would be a cubic meter of the Earth's atmosphere, but since humans can inhale it, we know that it contains quite a few atoms of mainly nitrogen and oxygen. In fact, compared to a cubic meter of interstellar vacuum, the same quantity of atmosphere would be 100 million trillion times denser than the former. Yet don't mistake the atmosphere to be among the least dense substances on Earth. Welcome, graphene aerogel. It is seven times lighter than air and is made up of carbon nanotubes and layers of carbon atoms. And now the standard for density, water, the substance upon which the metric system for density was based. It has a density of one ton per cubic meter, almost one ton actually, due to some early measurement errors. When freezing however, the free-moving water molecules rearrange themselves into lattices which makes them more spread out by 9%. That's why ice is less dense than water, 
and why roughly 10% of an iceberg will rise above water. But enough with the boring everyday densities that we are used to experiencing. Let's go towards the other extreme of the spectrum, where densities tend to break the nature of space-time. The Earth's inner core is a huge sphere of iron and nickel, with a density of 13 tons per cubic meter, or roughly 10 average-sized cars. Now that I think of it, cars are a better way of visualizing weight than tons or pounds, so let's stick to it. The Sun's density at its outer layer which is the photosphere is a meager 1 6,000th the density of air at sea level. However jump to the Sun's core, where all the nuclear business is taking place, and the density reaches roughly 115 cars per cubic meter. That is four times as dense as the most dense material on Earth, hassium. Fun fact, this is a false image of the Sun taken in ultraviolet light. Here is a true color image taken in the visible spectrum with a solar filter. And now perhaps to the most well-known candidate for the most dense substance in the universe, neutron stars. They arise after red supergiant stars go nova and their cores implode due to the insane pressure, but not enough to form a singularity. Because of this insane pressure, the cores which might have measured millions of kilometers in radius, will be compressed to a size one-third of Manhattan. Matter would be crushed and transform into neutrons at a density of roughly 10 trillion cars mashed into a cubic meter. If the Earth was to be condensed to such a degree, it would have a radius of 140 meters, taking Usain Bolt around 14 seconds to run across. Except he'd be instantly converted into a neutron soup due to gravity. Yet if Usain Bolt holds the world record for the 100-meter race, it's not neutron stars that hold the record for the densest object in the universe. Meet the hypothetical quark star. It is hypothesized that under even more extreme temperature and pressure than in neutron stars, the degeneracy pressure of the neutrons is overcome, and the neutrons are forced to merge and dissolve into their constituent quarks, creating an ultra-dense phase of quark matter. In this state, a new equilibrium is supposed to emerge, as a new degeneracy pressure between the quarks as well as repulsive electromagnetic forces will occur and hinder total gravitational collapse. Due to the extreme conditions needed for stabilizing quark matter, their existence has been impossible to prove neither observationally nor experimentally. But several observed candidates exist. And now to the definite winner of the density competition, your mo singularities. The center of black holes is often referred to as having infinite density. That is because our theories break down when trying to describe them, as having infinity as an answer means that you screwed up somewhere. Quantum mechanics provides some alternatives to that, mainly fuzzballs, which replace the singularity at the heart of a black hole by claiming that the entire region within the black hole's event horizon is actually a ball of one-dimensional strings, the ultimate building blocks of matter and energy derived from the string theory. Such an object would be the densest non-infinite object in our universe, at four times the density of neutron stars. Their existence is nowhere near confirmed, and if so it would rewrite our knowledge of black holes. But until then, here's a real photo of our central galactic black hole, Sagittarius A.